Yeah, so, Dennis, thank you very much to you and your family. Um, uh, it really does mean a lot to have Alyssa here and on home soil yeah. right into Toowoomba. So, yeah. welcome to you. Um, you mentioned on the obviously the live cross there the feeling that you must have had being on top of the world. Yeah. Um, just explain that to everyone when you finally got to the top, what that meant to you. Yeah, yeah, you know, it was a huge moment. Uh, you never really know what's going to happen on the mountain right up until, you know, you're, you're near the summit. And I remember being on the summit ridge and I could see it. And uh, it was a pretty surreal moment when I got to the top, um, you know, just to be there. It's something that I've dreamt about from, I think, about eight years old, that one day I was going to climb Everest. And uh, it's something that, uh, yeah, has always been a dream of mine. So it's, it's very surreal to actually be standing there on the summit. And all those years probably just flashed before your very eyes as you're up the top there, I imagine. Yeah, pretty much. You know, I thought about that a lot. Uh, you know, all the years of, of hard work that went into it, and I think it just makes it that much more special when you're up there. Keeping in mind that, uh, you know, Alyssa was the youngest at eight years old to do Kokoda. Uh, so <laughs> it's probably innate in the, in the genetic makeup, I'd suggest to you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and seems to be going along that way. Were there any, this is an interesting question, one of the young ladies um, mm -hmm. asked this. Um, what was your biggest challenge oh. as you as you made that trek? What was the biggest yeah, challenge? I think uh, you know the biggest challenge. Um, I'd actually say probably one of my most challenging moments was I remember a day I was heading from uh, you know base camp to camp two, and it's quite a long day, and uh, you know it, it was just a tough moment. Uh, you think about it, everything it takes to get there, and yeah, there's definitely times when you're on the mountain that you do have doubts, and you think, God, can I really do this? And you know, you're pushing yourself all the time. So I just think uh, the magnitude of the expedition is just the biggest challenge, is, is everything it takes to get there. And is that when you draw inspiration, not only of the training, the determination, but, but a family? Um, you're saying you took a picture yeah. of Christian with you? Yeah, yeah, definitely, I think so. Um, you know, my family, my dad's always been really, really supportive, and, uh, you know, um, they're definitely an inspiration to me when I'm up there. I think about them all the time, and then, you know, I want to make them proud, and, and even myself, you know, I, I, want to make myself proud because I've always believed I can do it and, and you know I was over there and thought the opportunity is right here and, and I can do it. Well after after two uh, two attempts and the third mm -hmm. time lucky probably as they say but I don't think there's too much luck involved in this I think it's just sheer determination. Yeah, yeah you know uh, three years in a row um, yeah. just keep going back and you know I just thought I want to I know that opportunity is going to come at some point and I want to be ready for it when it does and it, everything really just came together this year it ran pretty smooth for us yeah. and it was great. What sort of role do the Sherpas play in this sort of expedition? Yeah, you know, the Sherpas are a huge part of it and part of the culture on Everest. Um, and it's, uh, you know, we, we form a pretty close bond with them, actually. You know, you're climbing to the top of the world together. So uh, I, I had a, a personal Sherpa with me, and we mostly just climbed together um, mm. on our own schedule. And uh, he, he was amazing. Yeah, we, we came pretty close. But, uh, yeah, they're the backbone to every expedition. So did you have the same Sherpa the last two times as well, or different uh, Sherpa? Different, position? actually, um, okay. because I was with a different uh, company as well this time, so it's the first time we had ever climbed together. Mm. Um, but, yeah, we got, we got along great, and we had a great time. <laughs> Do they feel a similar relation? Uh, when they get to the top? Yeah, I mean, I, for some of them, they do it multiple times. Um, yeah. But yeah, definitely, it's, um, you know, in, in their culture, the mountains are, are very sacred as well, and mm. it's a really, really special place. So mm. definitely, uh, you know, there's that mutual feeling mm. of, of getting to the top. And did you have any cravings, or was there something that you really had a, had a hankering for when you were going up the mountain? You thought, gee, I wish I had this, or... You know, I'm missing this. Yeah, you know, I think uh, just in general, you know, there are moments where you, you miss home or you miss your family, but at the same time, I'm so focused on the expedition and, uh, mm. you know, I know once it's over, I'll get to see them. And so, yeah, definitely, like I said, it's more inspiring um, when I think about that. So, yeah. Mm. <laughs> and you said you, on the video interview there before, you had satellite connection yep. uh, to families, but that would have been obviously intermittent connection. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, at, at Camp 2, it didn't work at all. At Camp 1, it was pretty good, but um, there were a lot of times where it would just... I couldn't contact for, for most of the summit push, actually, yeah. um, but mostly in base camp, I, I would call between climbing. Uh, but, yeah, I, I remember uh, after the summit, as soon as I could, I, I got on the sat phone, and uh, my dad was actually on Kokoda, and so... I gave him a ring and it was barely there, but he, he understood that I had summited and, and he was really excited, so that was pretty what cool. What did he say down the phone? Was it, uh, <laughs> I remember can you say that? It, it, well, it was broken. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was really broken, but uh, I remember him being really excited and uh, yeah, he was over on Kokoda and I, I was on Everest and yeah. I managed to just get through to him, so Amazing. Yeah. 
Uh, do you take an iPod and listen to any inspirational, motivational music or anything? I do in base camp, yeah, do often. You? Yeah, I what do, do you listen and to? Then, uh, Heaps of different things, honestly. Um, I, I actually trek in with a lot of my music, but it's it's nothing specific. <laughs> so you go from base from four to the top. That's yep. right. So how much time is there, just because of the altitude? How much time do you have to do that safely? Yeah, I mean, pretty much twenty four hours. That's up and back um, right. to get out of that uh, at that height. Pretty much eight thousand meters and above. You're on a time limit. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, but really, you want to be. 18 hours is, is pretty much the limit yeah, um, keep, yeah. up there. Putting that, I was <laughs> yeah. trying to put this into perspective, and of course you've trained on tabletop and what have you, you know, like <laughs> uh, that, that's just a minuscule. Well, in fact, mm -hmm. Everest is about 13 times higher than tabletop. So those that have climbed it, uh, some from Clifford Gildson here have climbed it a few times, 13 times higher uh, than that. So uh, it's an extraordinary feat. Um, did you ever think when you got to the top, great, but now I've got to get back down? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you kind of have your moment of elation and it's all exciting, but definitely there's still that sense of absolutely there's, you know, this isn't over yet. And, and as we say in mountaineering, you're halfway when you get to the summit, you've still got to get back down. So uh, definitely. And we had a really long day. We went all the way to camp too. So uh, we were exhausted by the end of it. But yeah. uh, we were No celebrations. <laughs> no celebrations. Just wait till you get to the bottom. Yeah, you got to wait till you get down and then celebrate. <laughs> Good on you. So what's next for Alyssa Razor? Yeah, you know, I think uh, next uh, I've got a few things on. Um, I'm looking at doing the, the seven summits, um, which is the highest point on each of the seven continents. It's another mountaineering challenge and sort of an extension after Everest because um, mm. Everest is a part of that. But also, you know, I'm looking at uh, leading some trips as well with my dad on Kokoda and mm. Kilimanjaro and I'll be working uh, in the business adventure professional. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Terrific. And you've got a book? Yes. Is what's happening there? There, there is a book this is a scoop. <laughs> this is a scoop. There's only a couple of media here, so yes, good the, opportunity. Uh, <laughs> the book we're looking for the book to be released uh, in September. That's the plan, and so yeah. we've been working on it for a couple of years now. Um, Just getting to that final chapter. Yes, <laughs> the, we're, this is the final chapter that we got to put in. So we're not a bad final been chapter. Extending it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, this all, um, we're looking for it to be released in September and it's with Penguin Publishing and so really looking forward to that coming out. Good on you. Are you spending a bit of time in Toowoomba now? Are you yeah, yeah, I'm going to go and see my family and uh, hang out for a bit and yeah, just enjoy being home. <laughs> Good on you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, she is the youngest Australian uh, ever to reach Mount Everest at 19 years old, uh, Alyssa Razor. Give her a big round of applause. Thank you. Well done. There are some, well, there is some, some morning tea that's been provided once again by Brisbane West Well Camper. Can I particularly thank uh, Phil Gregory, uh, Sarah Hales, uh, Caitlin, and also Rod uh, for your efforts in getting the media in and out uh, today. It takes uh, quite a couple of questions to you first. So you have yeah. obviously got that last little chapter of the book to go, and it would be this big compared to the rest of it in all the press, especially the last three attempts. Yeah. The last few. What have you been writing while you're actually on the mountain? Uh, yeah, sort of. Like I've, I've just been putting together sort of diaries and trying to make sure I get as much you know detail from the expedition as possible. Uh, but yeah, the, we've mostly finished it, and so it is just to put this final chapter in now. And so yeah, um, sort of just making sure that I remember all the details of the expedition, and I'll now sit down and sort of write everything and, and put it together. Yeah. Glenn, how are you feeling having her? Oh, it's good to have it home. We obviously haven't seen her for a couple of months, so um, we just sort of converse between two different sat phones, which is always good fun. Uh, but yeah, it's good to have her home now. Yeah. Alyssa, at what point did you realise that you were going to reach the summit? I think, uh, you know, I, like I said, I felt pretty good, um, even though I was tired uh, once we got to Camp 4. Uh, you know, even then, we had heard reports that the weather, you know, the wind might be too high to even try for the summit, so we weren't even sure up until then. Uh, it was pretty much once we had started climbing that night, I was pretty certain that I was going to reach the summit. And then I remember getting up onto um, a place called the South Summit. And from there, you can see the summit ridge and then the summit. You can pretty much see it from there. And that was the moment where I seriously thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to the summit. And from that, it was just surreal thinking what it was going to be like to get there. So, yeah. and You've spoken about the dangers that are involved in doing this on yep. a similar kind of situation to yours. This woman has gone up and it has been a sad part of the story. Yeah. 
I saw her once. I actually didn't know that there was another Australian woman uh, on the mountain and I didn't know her. Uh, but I saw her actually while we were both coming down. We were on a very similar summit schedule. So uh, going down from camp four to camp three, um, I, I passed her. Uh, but I don't think I, I realized I didn't until later uh, who she was. So yeah, I, I remember seeing her once on the expedition. What was that like for you then to learn later that she was like? Yeah, it was difficult, particularly because she was, you know, coming down. Um, and that's when it, uh, it happened a little bit later. Uh, and at the time, it didn't seem like, you know, anything was wrong. It was like another climber. Um, so yeah, it, it, it was difficult, you know, and you always think in hindsight, even though at that point it, it wasn't too much of an issue, you know, could we have done something and you think, you know, given her oxygen or tried to get her down to camp two for a rescue, you know, you do have those thoughts, definitely. Melissa, can you tell us about your 20 minutes on the summit? How did you spend that time and what were you thinking? Yeah, um, you know, at first it was just trying to get some photos, make sure I got uh, my summit photos. Um, but then after I did that, I, I kind of just wanted to take it in as well, you know, have that moment on the summit where you just realise you did it, um, you know, and put in all that hard work. But yeah, I, when I was thinking when I got there was just that, uh, oh my God, I did it, you know, and sort of that realisation of, uh, you know, it completed the goal. Um, it was a really good feeling. You've got the seven summits, you've got the book on the way, a few other things <laughs> on the way as well. Have you got any other plans to return to Everest? Yeah, it's in the back of my mind. Um, you know, it, it's uh, something that we've talked about. I said maybe I would do it again one day, but I kind of just wanted to focus on this expedition before I worried about that. But yeah, you know, I've thought about maybe summoning from the north side one day and in, in a couple of years. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll focus on these few goals and then, and then see that. What about you, Glenn? Would you go with her? <laughs> <laughs> Funny you should ask. We briefly discussed um, doing a, a father-daughter one and uh, one half of us is keen and clearly capable, <laughs> and the other half not so sure yet. <laughs> How does the body feel when, you, when you're making way up the mountain? And there's obviously times where you probably feel like giving it in almost a bit. Like what, what times can you describe the... Yeah, there's a lot of moments where, honestly, you think, like, i just got to get through the next ten steps. And, and you know, it's, it's completely mental. You realise that, you know, I, I had a great three days of climbing toward um, on the summit push on toward the summit but uh, yeah definitely I remember thinking just get through the next few steps and get through the next few steps or try and get to the next anchor point and and you just break it down into smaller pieces but yeah there are days where it's so mentally tough that you think I don't know if I can get to camp and you just got to break it down into smaller pieces and you, and you get there but uh, yeah I remember I had one day where I really didn't feel good um, heading to camp too and that was probably my toughest day mentally was just to try and get through it yeah and obviously when you got to the bottom what once it's all over what mm -hmm. what do you do then once you get to the bottom do you how, how do you celebrate like what do you do there? yeah uh well our team of sherpas was amazing actually and they uh they sort of organized a little celebration in base camp for us and you know just just to be with them um one last time because it's it's not long after that that we start the trek out and you know, very quickly we pack up camp, but uh, yeah, we get down and celebrate with the rest of the team in base camp, and and we keep it um, pretty small, and then yeah, we we trek out the next day. So yeah, and then we also celebrate back in Kathmandu with with the team once we're all back there. To us, we're all saying you know that you've conquered Mount Everest, but I read on your Facebook page that's <laughs> not a word you'd use to describe. Why is that? Yeah, you know, uh, honestly, it, it's it's not that kind of feeling, I guess, and it's somewhat disrespectful and then you know I, I know people mean well when they say it but you just don't I don't like to say that I conquered Everest um, you know one of my favorite quotes by Sir Edmund Hillary is it's not the mountain we conquer but ourselves and I think that describes the expedition pretty well is I summited Everest and I'm proud of that but I didn't conquer it at all and uh, yeah to me it's it will never be conquered you know it's a beautiful mountain. What's the first thing you're going to do when you uh, first thing I'm going to do is uh, probably hug my mum and uh, we're, we're going to go out and I think uh, have some lunch or something and, and hang out together and then later when uh, my siblings get home from school I, I get to hang out with them as well. So no day off school for them, you coming home today? No, no, they're, they're at school today so <laughs> I'll see them when they get home. <laughs> the last thing you first on TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he didn't actually. Uh, he didn't know about the photo, um, but you know, uh, keep him up to date on, on the climbs. He actually, I got a message off him 
once I got back to Kathmandu and he said, have you, have you finished climbing the mountain yet? He sent me a message. So, uh, you know, he, he sort of knows what I do, but he, he didn't actually know about the, the photo, so. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and can I thank all the media as well for your interest yes. in this? It's obviously thank is you. a national significance, but it takes an effort to get here. So thank you very yeah. much uh, for all of you being thank here. You. Thank you. Thank you.